New York Community Bank Corp shares are still halted for trading, but they were down more than 42 percent before the halt on reports it will seek outside capital to try and shore up its balance sheet. Joining me now to discuss this is Chris Marinak, analyst over at Jenny Montgomery Scott, also CNBC.com's banking reporter Hugh Son. Hugh, uh, Chris, thank you guys both very much for being with us here. Hugh, I'm going to start with you because... Uh, you've done some extensive reporting on this, and the most recent of which has been about some of the deposit states that are at NYCB right now. So what is this newest development in your mind, and how does it frame the NYCB discussion? Well, I think it speaks to the, the questions that are out there, right? So the last that we knew from NYCB was that their, their deposit base was stable. Uh, there are now questions as to whether parts of those will have to leave, given the, the rating downgrades from Friday from Moody's. Now, today, what we had was a headline from the journal that basically said they're out seeking capital. They need a capital injection. And while on the one hand, that's not surprising, I think the absence of, of word from NYCB to contextualize what that means, uh, I think there's a lot of concern that perhaps on one hand, regulators are, are forcing their hand saying you got it whole. You're in the midst of a review about your material weaknesses and your loan review processes. What is that brought up? And perhaps do you need to fill that hole, to backfill that hole of capital? Or is there some other cause for, for this uh, for concern? And I think until we actually get definitive word from NYCB about how to think about this, there's going to be this reaction from the market, which is all news is bad news. OK, this is we're almost a year removed now, roughly a year removed from the regional banking crisis, Hugh, that we saw last year. Uh, during that time, when some of these lenders who were, you know, embattled but not at the stage that NYCB is right now, had talked about things like asset sales, focusing on core assets, that sort of thing, w what type of announcements do you foresee in the coming days, maybe weeks, with NYCB with regard to how you can shore it up absent a straight-up cash infusion from an outside yeah. equity source? Well, I think that'd be a huge boost of confidence. You could see the stock violently react to the upside if that were to happen. Um, and to pivot off one thing our colleague Leslie Pickard said, you know, she had heard that there were private sources of capital out there. Now, just to give the, the, the viewer out there some context now, there was a deal uh, several months ago, PacWest, Bank of California, another sort of wounded uh, entity from, from last year's uh, you know, chaos. So PacWest needed uh, about $400 million of private capital to get that deal done. So there is the understanding that there are private equity players out there, lots of dry powder who are comfortable with this asset class, who are waiting to potentially, uh, you know, inject uh, money into and own banks. And this would be the cohort of folks that they're, this deal is being shopped to, Dom. Gotcha. Okay. So, Chris, let's bring you into the discussion here. You have and, and have been bullish on this name, NYCB, for a while. Uh, this has been jarring for a lot of regional bank investors out there. Can you take us through what your thoughts are right now, given the headlines we saw out of the journal and elsewhere? Sure. Um, thanks for having me on. And I think that the capital raise conversation is kind of old news. The company mentioned this, that all ideas were on the table back on February 7th. They also said at the same time that they had $37 billion of liquidity on top of the $23 billion of uninsured deposits. So if all the uninsured deposits ran from the bank, and they have not, but if they did, they have plenty of coverage. If some of the deposit outflows that he was reported on this week occurred, which I think would take time, but let's just say they all happen today, they have excess liquidity to cover those, too. So it's not a good situation to have that much deposit outflow if it occurred. I don't even think it's occurred at all. The company really is prepared to do what it takes to run the business in a better fashion. I think what it needs right now is time, time to get the 10K out, time to explain what has or really in many cases has not happened and then proceed with their best alternatives. I look at capital as a comfort capital, not something that they have to do. Their regulatory ratio, um, CET1, is 9.6%. Under a stress test this year, they would have to have about 7.5%, maybe a little less. So there's a good 200 basis points of additional capital that they already have from a regulatory perspective. And then as they shrink the balance sheet, those capital ratios would get slightly better. I do see them making substantial changes, but I think they've also signaled that that's going to happen. But the first point for now is to get the 10K filed and really clarify a lot of the misperceptions that are out there. All right. Uh, Chris, thank you very much for some context around that. Also to Hugh as well. We'll continue to monitor this and talk to you guys later on as these develop out there. Uh, for more, by the way, on Hugh's reporting, go over to CNBC.com. More on that NYCB story is there.